In the ancestral home, a thousand kings ruled without division. But in their thirst for power, the royal family swallowed up their planet. Their army was tasked with conquering everything in its path. But one day, the traitor's blade killed the king and queen. Several planets began to prepare for revolution. Senator Balisarius seized power as a show of force, sent the most brutal general to destroy all the rebels. On a distant planet, Korra plows the land, and in the evening, the whole village celebrates Harvest Day. At first light, an Imperial ship appeared in the sky. Korra raises the alarm and asks the village chief to give the Imperials everything they ask for. But under no circumstances should we say how fertile this land is. Military shuttles land near the village. Admiral Atticus comes out from below them with a request to tell about this village, and also give out any information about the rebels hiding in this star system. They are controlled by the woman Devra Bloodaxe and her brother Darian. Atticus's army needs food, which is why they are willing to buy supplies at three times the market price. The leader realizes that this is a trick and talks about the low fertility of this land. They will have to refuse the offer. Atticus thinks this is strange since their fields are very large. He needs a person to oversee the harvest. Gunnar emerges from the crowd and admits that they have supplies. Atticus goes berserk at this news and kills the headman along with his wife. Atticus gives 10 weeks to harvest. To prevent them from being deceived, he leaves an armed detachment in the village. In their arsenal, there is a robot named Jimmy, who in the past was engaged in protecting the king. One of the soldiers says that these robots will not fight anymore. When the king was killed, they laid down their arms and renounced violence. And to prove this, Marcus shoots the robot, but Private Iris asks him to stop. A little later, Sam approaches the robot and hands him a rag. Jimmy notices that she looks very much like the king's dead daughter. At this time, all the villagers gathered to discuss a plan of action. They come to the conclusion that if they manage to complete the task, the Empire will take pity on them. This life does not suit Cora, and she decides to run away. Leaving the house, she notices how Sam was grabbed by soldiers and dragged into a barn. Private Iris tries to intercede for her, but nothing comes of it. Suddenly, Cora appears and, together with Iris, kills all the soldiers. The captain remains alive. Jimmy comes running in response to the noise, and to protect Sam, he is ready to violate his principles. A new day comes. The man gives Cora the gun that he found on the day the Cora ship crashed. She wants to find General Titusa, who opposed the army of the Empire. Gunnar will go with her. As night approaches, the wind takes a break. Korra says that when she was nine, the Empire arrived on her planet. The people on her planet organized a defense, but this only infuriated the General. And when Korra found the General, she pulled the trigger without hesitation. But there were no bullets in the gun. Balisarius killed her entire family and took the punishment to his ship. For the next five years, they made her into an Imperial soldier. At 18, she was promoted to commander and began conquering planets in the name of the king. Tomorrow, they reach the Velt. There are bounty hunters working for the Empire. And by coincidence, they caught the man they were traveling to see. When they enter the bar, an alien comes to them and asks them to give him Gunnar for one night. Korra has to chase the alien away and asks for information about the General Titus. One of the aliens names a planet where they can find him. Suddenly, pirates enter the bar. A firefight begins in which Kai helps them. He is ready to join her squad and find General Titus. A couple days later, the squad arrives at New Wodi. There lives a slave Tarak who is ready to help Korra, but before that she has to pay a debt for him. The price is too high, and the slave trader offers a deal. If Tarak tames the griffin, he will be freed, or they will all become slaves. Tarak asks to release the ropes, and to everyone's surprise, he manages to tame the beast. But when the other men climb on it, the beast becomes enraged and kills the man. On planet Dagus, they meet the master swordswoman Nemesis, but before they can listen to their proposal, she must complete her task. The spider-like alien has had children die, and now she wants justice. Nemesis asks to let the child go. Revenge and justice are different things. The spider runs to attack, and though at first the spider wins, Nemesis had a trump card, plasma swords capable of piercing the spider's armor. A little later, Korra reveals that as a reward for her service, she was promoted to the royal family's personal guard. The princess had the divine gift of raising the dead. One day the king said, when she becomes queen, she will bring the compassion that he lost during all the hard years of war. 
A couple days later, the group arrives at the gladiatorial arena. There they find the legendary general. The man no longer wants to resist the Empire. All his men are dead. Korra offers to avenge his friends, and the general joins the squad. At this time, bounty hunters bring a man who knows where the rebels are hiding. Hoping to survive, the man tells everything he knows. But no one has ever left Admiral Atticus alive. The squad arrives on the home planet of King Levitica. The king personally meets Korra and promises to organize a meeting with the rebels. The rebel army arrives. Korra asks them to help protect a village of farmers, but even Devra doesn't want to fight the Dreadnought. Korra says that the rebel grain sales have gotten the village in trouble, and Axe agrees to help. Axe explains to his men that a deadly battle awaits them. Each of them can leave the group, but all the rebels are ready to go to the end. The group leaves the planet with their new allies. Kai asks to make one landing to leave a package. At this time, the Empire army kills the King of Levitica, and a space fleet destroys the capital. A little later, the squad arrives at Gondival. Kai asks to unload the grey boxes, and most importantly, not to watch what is in them. Axe asks his men to watch the sky in case the enemy shows up. Among the workers, Korra notices an alien who was following her in the bar. Turns out it was all a trap. Kai's been working for the Empire from the beginning. The containers turn into robots and catch the rebels. When Kai found Korra, he realized thanks to her faith, he would be able to gather the meaningful top of the resistance. But he couldn't dream of the title general. Admiral Atticus appears and greets each opponent. Kai offers Gunari a choice. He paralyzes everyone and walks away alive. In just one move, Gunari frees Korra and kills Kai. A firefight ensues. Being the strongest warrior, Korra easily kills the opponents, and Gunari frees the rest of the rebels. The Admiral gives the order to destroy the rebel ships. In a desire to avenge his men, Axe jumps on the turret, but the soldier manages to dodge, pull out a gun and fire a few shots. With his last strength, the Axe pulls the lever, destroying the Imperial ship. The Admiral is ready to give one last fight. Korra runs to attack. Suddenly, the ship destroys the bridge, but the Admiral miraculously survives. A fight breaks out, and in the heat of battle, the symbol of the Empire breaks, and Korra uses the wreckage as a weapon. The Admiral is defeated, but the war is not over. Tarek attaches a rope to the lighthouse, and they attract Korra. General Titus considers this battle an incredible blow to the Empire. Now the entire galaxy knows that the Imperials can be defeated. A day later, the squad returns to Velt. The Imperials find the Admiral's body. It turns out he's not an ordinary human, but a cyborg. His consciousness has shifted to Balazarius, who is annoyed by the Admiral's failures. But he'll have two chances to defeat the Resistance and return Korra to her father. And if he doesn't, Atticus will die. This is the end of the movie. See you soon. Bye.